I was pretty surprised with Larry Fink's comments, uh, you know, on, on Fox Business of all places. And I, th I thought it was pretty deliberate that he went on that show of all shows. And um, I thought it was like, Andy, you wrote that piece, like Bitcoin's the most ESG asset, right? <laughs> you think about BlackRock's history with ESG. They were like pushing that stuff. And now you've seen over the last few years, it's just really backfired. I mean, they've gotten pushback from the oil and gas industry. Um, multiple states said they'd stop doing business with them. And now you can just see them backpedaling. And now they're going into Bitcoin. And Andy, you wrote that piece of why Bitcoin's actually really, you know, quote unquote, ESG. It's the perfect ESG asset. So, I mean... I think that maybe and it is and it is it is it is the, it's not we're just saying that be, with a smirk on our face it is like <laughs> I know. It, it, yeah I agree and and here's the backstory on that right so it was it was 18 months ago that I published that piece in in Bitcoin magazine and uh and the there was two impetuses for it one was and we all saw this right everyone in Bitcoin saw this the the ESG narrative was just getting louder and louder and number two, I saw it with my clients and I was starting to get questions, you know, criticism, criticisms, you know, hey, Andy, this, uh, this, see, this seems non-compliant, non-ESG compliant. And so that was the reason I penned the piece and I had some confidence that I was right at the time. I hope, I hope, uh, I hope we're right about this. I think we're right. And uh, it has been funny to see the the turnabout and see larry fink of all people you know <laughs> adopt uh, bitcoin but hey maybe he uh maybe he figured it out i'm sure he's got a team of analysts to uh to analyze the esg characteristics of bitcoin and even though i think he said he wouldn't utter the the uh, the words or the letters esg in that interview anymore uh because of the political backlash my guess is yeah they've they figured it out well, the the one thing i'm really interested to see so now that you have the Larry Finks of the world coming out and being pro Bitcoin and saying that it's hope for, for the world, right. And it's international, nobody controls money. Um, I wonder if you start to see some of the politicians that are heavily influenced by the big bankers start to change their tune on Bitcoin. And I think we know the, the politicians I'm referring to, and I'm not going to say their names out. It's almost like the, uh, you know, the Harry Potter Voldemort thing. I just, you can't even utter the words, right? Um, but there's a couple of them and they're hardcore staunch. And I think, I think a lot of them will say that they're, they're anti-crypto and not necessarily maybe anti-Bitcoin. But I think it's going to be really telling looking at the close out of 2023, if any of those voices start to change their tune towards Bitcoin. Because I think you might see it. I think you might see it because I think a lot of these banks are are yeah. saying, "Don't be, hey, shut your mouth." No, you yeah, keep getting right. money from us. You want us to keep supporting your campaigns and getting reelected and doing our our deeds for us on the hill. Then shut your mouth. Yeah, They're like BlackRock's on the phone. It's like, oh, we we like yeah. this thing now. Okay, okay. I think that's going to be a very <laughs> telling moment if we see a shift on any of these people on that particular topic. Because I think it well. Happen. Those politicians too, they wrote a lot of letters and we know that the letters were full of misinformation, oh, yeah. you know, shoddy research. I mean, um, there was multiple Bitcoiners that dug through them and really pointed point by point, pointed out what they got wrong. And so the truth was always on our side. So maybe they also will come to the light and realize how wrong they've been about but all it. All that was penned back whenever it was, they maybe were hopeful that when the price was at 16,000 or 17,000, that they were going to be able to pin it to the mat and get it to tap out and, and disappear and, and the whole thing fall mm -hmm. apart only to find out that it's up like what, 80% on the year to date. And it's like, yeah. well, holy hell, this, like, you can't kill this thing. And I nope. think that, I think that realization is like, all right, okay. So like, we got to deal with this. We got to have a product around this because this thing's going to come back with a vengeance. Like it's not just coming back angry. Like it's coming back with like everybody on the block and it's going to like slaughter all of us. Mm -hmm. Well, yep. And not as there yeah. huge potential upside in terms of business, but BlackRock being the market, I'm talking about black market or BlackRock is the market in terms of investment, right? They cannot afford to be tarred 
you know, by a significant portion of the population uh, as uh, as bad. So I'll give you an example. I've had clients who have come to me, more than one client, who have said, do we own BlackRock products? I don't want to own BlackRock products. Wow. This ESG narrative is nonsense. You know, it's wrong. It's bad for America. You know, basically, <laughs> basically, I am prohibiting you or I'm considering prohibiting you financial advisor Andy <laughs> from owning this stuff on my behalf. So if you are the uh consumer, you know, the biggest investment brand in the market, you cannot afford to have a significant portion of the population yeah, basically backing away from your product for I don't know if I want to say political reasons but let's say headline headline reasons. So I think that may be a factor. Bad for business. It's when you get to a certain size, you must be friends with everyone, right? You must mm -hmm. be as plain vanilla as possible and as, as minimally offensive as possible because all you'll do by taking an opinion is, uh, is eliminate some portion of your potential customer base. Which is why it's pretty crazy that they're putting their neck out, you know, their reputation on the line when they're filing for this spot Bitcoin ETF. Like, obviously, they think that uh, there's a chance that A will get approved and that this thing's not going away and that there's a lot of demand for it. Oh.